Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to A Place in Space and thank you for joining us on our weekly regular programming today. It's of course not Tuesday, we're on Wednesday today, which is this week's new comic today. As always, after every single bank holiday, everything rolls back by a day. Now, let's kick off. Amazing Spider-Man 25 has been touted as a bit of a massive issue. They've made a bit of a song and dance about it, what being a mini milestone issue. And of course, issue 26, which is fast approaching, is anticipated to be a bit of a big death issue. Marvel are screaming that loud and proud from their website, so watch this space. Also wanted to show you this because every other issue of everything Amazing Spider-Man now is continuing the Disney What If Mickey and Friends variant. So this week we are homaging, or if you like, or loving the new Avengers covers. Now, here's one that I've been long anticipating for a very long time indeed. Sean Murphy has been doing his White Knight verse, for lack of a better term, for quite a few years now, you can actually say. I think it's five years and counting. So this is White Knight Presents Generation Joker. Um, now, obviously, we were introduced to... The Joker's children. There's another way really to say it at the end of like, you know, the Red Hood and in Beyond the White Knight. So this is exploring the Joker's origin, how Jack became Joker, and also the relationship with the Joker's children in what is anticipated there, I can speak sometimes, anticipated to be a slightly more playful take on the Joker verse, because up until now the White Knight verse has been quite dark. Watch the space, let's see. Right, Chip Sadarsky needs a lot of love from me all the time right now because personally, I really enjoy his work. I've been liking his Batman. This is part 11, I wanna say it again, part 11 of the ongoing interior dead, uh, Deadpool, shut up Thomas, Daredevil story. And I personally believe he deserves a lot of acclaim for that. In an era where Marvel, uh, some could say, stop starting all the time, to see an ongoing Daredevil series get a lot of love and just be allowed to continue as the creator sees fit, perfect. Long may that continue, and I have to say you guys are representing that in the sales. You guys love this book. And we will revisit this in just a few minutes time for a particular cover, which you may have already heard about. Extreme Venom Verse, this is a bit of a concept. This is a mini anthology series going on down. So Eddie Brock is in there, Dylan Brock is in there, and you might also notice Samurai Venom, because that's a thing is also in there. Little three tales. One of them is written by Mercury and Dolfo. Let's see what they do. It's good fun. Cull and bun. I feel like I'm speaking about at this point every single week. For a good reason. The man is a bit of a modern monolith of modern horror writing. He's extraordinarily good at what he does. He's hopped over from Only Press at this point, back over to Boom. Remember how good Boom are doing on modern horror right now? This is Ghost Law number one. I just read this and I loved it. I don't like spooky kid story. They terrify the pants off me. Do you remember The Orphanage by Guillermo del Toro? I could... Hated that. It was wonderful. I hated it. This gave me little goosebumps and reminiscence of that. Cullen Bunn, you naughty bastard. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it because you're bloody good at writing horror. Don't read it if you want a comedy. Green Lantern number one comes your way from DC. It's nice to see how back in the game. Obviously, the soft relaunch is continuing. Green Arrow came out very recently. Here's Green uh, Lantern number one. And obviously, Wonder Woman is getting her 800 very, very soon indeed to continue all things Diana going back into the main DC verse. It's Jeff the Land Shark came out, yes, I, you're correct, some time ago. But you clamoured after a second print, and Marvel responded in spades, giving a very much more playful number one cover. And if you ever want to pick up something completely daft, bonkers, and fun, available for all ages, that is a lot of fun. No words, so it's completely image-based, no narrative. It's Jeff the Land Shark. If I have to explain that, I'm probably in the wrong job at this point. It's a shark being Jeff in Marvel. This, however, might need a little bit of explaining. Now, now La Muerta has long been the guy's pinup, and shall we say, slightly more kitschy pinup art. This completely knocks it on the head. Now, Brian Polito, of course, does Lady Death. This is a monster-sized one-off shot issue, and I have to say, it is essentially, I think, Lara Croft with a little bit more cheesecake thrown in. But that is a very serious issue. The cover, of course, by Sun Kamindi is beautiful. She's fantastic. But the interior, they are giving you an absolutely whopping issue full of the overtones and slightly more supernatural elements the character's been known for. That actually feels like a very hard and hefty, gritty piece. I'm looking forward to that. That looks intriguing. Silk number one is back out from now. Marvel have got you another five-piece Cindy Moon miniseries coming on here, but let's her back into the main Spider-Verse. Let's see where that goes. Here's one that I wanted to end the note on and speak about at length this week because this is what I've been looking forward to for absolutely bloody forever. Simon Karansky made his name on Spawn and everyone went, who the hell are you? He had dark, murky artwork with the absolute best of them. And I do mean murky. There were panels you'd pour over going, what's going on here? In a good way. It was wonderful. So he brings out his very own series. This is something epic. He's written it, he's drawn it, he's illustrated it, he's coloured it. It's all him. The series essentially is imagination is endless and this young boy Daniel, his imagination is not limited. He can basically create anything he wants. 
which leads to a very dark series because where he can do anything he wants he's essentially alone and then the mind goes to some really dark places so that's Simon Kuransky giving a bit of a manipulative modern horror it is literally from the front cover it ends on the back okay so I'm going to turn that over super quickly if you don't want the story there's no spoiler it is literally he stuffed every single page with as much as he possibly can very cool right covers of the week are coming your way super quickly but before then we're bringing back our hallowed tradition let's Please try and go and don't get me fired this week. We're bringing back not cover of the week. Not to rag on anyone, but I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That's Cassidy. I love Cassidy. I love his Astonishing X-Men. I don't know what's going on there, so I'm just going to raise that as this is an example where we don't just champion absolutely everything. If we see something we don't like here at Place in Space, we will say so. Not sure what's going on there. Let's move very swiftly on to these, because... Oh, I love these. This is Jay Lee doing Scar, because if you didn't know you need Jay Lee drawing a line in your life, you do. This is Extreme Venomverse by Scotty Young. Very much more playful, simplistic Scotty's this week. That's cool, as is this. That is the amazing Spider-Man 25 Scotty Young variant cover. Also very cool. Peach Momoko has done the Samurai Venom, which I really like. I will confess, I am not a massive Peach Momoko fan. I really like that. That's gorgeous. A few quick ones. That's Ivan Reese. Hopping over from Detective Comics over onto the Green Lantern number one cardstock variant cover. And they give a lot of love for DC and their cardstock covers these days. They are hefty things and they feel gorgeous. The production values on them is lovely. Derek Chu is winning the week though. He's done that. Cindy Moon gets his graces. That's lovely. But for me, it was all about this one. That is the That went balmy, as you can probably imagine. We have sold out. We're going to try and get some more, but watch this space. That is this week's Daredevil variant cover. Hope you all enjoy. We, whatever we have left from all this will be online very, very soon indeed. If you can, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe, and all that good jazz. It's fabulous and it really does help us out if you can. Much love. And also, we've got what have we got, what not wise. I'm sure we've got some shows coming your way very soon, but I'm sure we will be back this Saturday. I'm not here, I'm on holiday somewhere, I'm running around London, but the chief will be on, he'll be there with Steve. I'm sure there'll be some laughing, some shouting. There'll probably be some good comics as well. Love you all, much love. And lastly, thank you all for so much for coming down for Free Comic Day this last Saturday. We had a blast, we hope you did too. I'm sure we'll do something again like that very soon, as soon as we can. Much love, folks. See you in a bit.